when your team gets eliminated from the playoffs, you pretty much have no other choice but to lift your head up and just look forward to next year. You lost fair and square. But there has been a few instances throughout NBA history that must have been a tough pill to swallow for certain NBA fans. It's one of the worst feelings you could have, losing a game under circumstances that was completely out of your control, altering history, leaving you questioning what could have been. So in this video, let's take a look at some missed calls that ultimately sealed their fate. 1993, the Chicago Bulls versus the New York Knicks in the Eastern Conference Finals. The Knicks quickly jumped to a 2-0 lead in the series, handling business on their home floor. But then, so did the Bulls, winning the next two games in their building, tying up the series two games apiece, heading back to Madison Square Garden for a pivotal Game 5. The game came down to the wire. With under 20 seconds left, Knicks down by one. Charles Smith ends up with the ball under the basket and proceeded to miss four layups in a row, which led to the Bulls sealing the victory by getting one last bucket immediately after. But taking a look at the play again, many people believe that at least one of those blocks had to have been a foul. Now, it's not 100% clear, but I'm not kidding you, a lot of people do believe that the fourth block was absolutely a foul. Sure, they're probably just salty Knicks fans, but some just couldn't let go of the fact that if Smith would have gone to the free throw line, then they would have won game 5. And even if the Bulls won on their floor in game 6, they still would have had a great chance to beat the Bulls at their house in game 7. There were a lot of fans saying that the league wanted the Bulls to be in the finals. Also, Charles Oakley had this to say, quote, We would have beat them. The Bulls got all the calls. So what do you guys think? Is it just outstanding defense? Or did the officials miss a call that screwed the Knicks? Game 6 of the 1998 NBA Finals, Bulls vs Jazz, MJ found a way to hold off Utah and win his 6th NBA championship. But Jazz fans strongly believe that if it weren't for two specific bad calls, then we would have saw a completely different outcome. First is an incident that took place in the second quarter. Howard Isley had to act quick in order to beat the shot clock, and he clearly does but the refs didn't think so. So they waved off his made three-pointer that obviously should have counted. Howard Isley lets this shot go. He gets it out of his hands, and you're gonna see here, look, the shot clock actually should be at one here, but the ball is off. Right there, you see it. The ball is in the air at one. That should have counted. That's a big turnaround, and the Bulls get a big break there. Instead of up seven, Utah, now it's only a four-point game. Then, with four minutes left to go in the fourth quarter, Ron Harper knocks down a two-point field goal to tie the game as their shot clock expires. But this time, the referees did not even question if he got it off in time. They just allowed the bucket to be counted anyway, despite the replay clearly showing that it should not have counted. Now you watch Harper as he takes this shot. Does he get it off in time? I don't know. That's a tough call. Well, That's you know what? Look. If they miss that call, it's a five-point swing in missed calls on shot clock situations. They took a Howard Isley three away wrongly in the first half. All in all, there was a total of three blown calls if you want to include what many people believe is a push-off by MJ. They ended up losing by just one point, and we were just a few calls away from possibly witnessing a Game 7 in 1998. 1994 Eastern Conference Semifinals between the Knicks and Bulls. The series tied 2-2 going into Game 5, and with 7 seconds left, New York down by 1. John Starks found an open Hubert Davis, who attempts to take the lead. He misses the shot, but a late whistle would be called on Scottie Pippen. Davis for the win! Referee Hugh, Referee Hugh Hollins claimed that Pippen made contact with Davis after the shot, which allowed Davis to head to the line for a chance to win the game. He knocks down the first one to tie the game, and then connects on the second to put New York up by one. Scottie Pippen and Phil Jackson couldn't believe the call, 
and here's what they had to say after the game. Quote, I've seen a lot of things happen in the NBA, but I've never seen anything happen like what happened at the end of the game. Have I ever seen a single call make a difference like that? Pippen said. No, never ever. It cost us the whole series. Remember, back then, touching someone after the ball has been released was never called. So it's understandable why Pippen was so pissed off. Eventually, the Knicks went on to win the series in seven games. Now, as you all know, Michael Jordan did not play in this 1994 series because he wasn't even in the league at the time. And people find it very suspicious that Michael conveniently left this moment out of the Last Dance documentary. I mean, just think about it. It would have been a bad look for Jordan's legacy if a team that was without him moved on to the conference finals to face an Indiana Pacers team that they would have been heavily favored in and then possibly make it to the finals all without the help of Jordan. It does make sense if you look at it that way, to go ahead and not even mention the egregious call that halted Pippen's playoff run, and is now known as one of the worst calls in sports history. Game 6 of the 1995 Eastern Conference Semifinals between the Bulls and Magic. This was the year MJ made a comeback to the NBA. And on this night, he found himself down 3-2 in the series, facing elimination. His Chicago Bulls were up by one, with about a minute left. All they needed to do was play perfect basketball, and they're headed to a game seven. But Orlando wanted to end it right then and there. Let, it, let uh, Anderson go against Kukoc, he can take him to the basket. Five. Oh my goodness, what a shot by Nick Anderson! And it's a one point lead for Orlando, 103-102. Now, it wasn't over yet. A little over 30 seconds left is plenty of time to regain the lead, but that wouldn't happen. Grant Hardaway is back in. Jordan, pull up jumper inside to Longley. He missed the lay-in from Jordan. Can you believe it? 103-102 Orlando. At first, it looks like Longley misses a wide open layup, but taking a closer look, it appears that he blatantly gets hit on the arm. So the Bulls did have another shot to try and keep their season alive. But after this steal, it was pretty much over, as the Magic sent the Bulls home in six games. And former Chicago Bull Horace Grant even said that it was extremely satisfying celebrating in front of the booing fans. And this was Jordan's last ever playoff defeat. 1997 Eastern Conference Semifinals between the Miami Heat and the New York Knicks. Going into Game 5, the Knicks actually had a 3-1 lead in the series, so it was a must win for Miami. And they got it. They took Game 5, but it ended pretty ugly. This series. P.J. Brown throws Charlie Ward, watch out. This one's gonna get really ugly. As you just saw, Charlie Ward aggressively tried to gain position down low, which P.J. Brown did not like. So he decided to flip Ward into the front row, leading to a huge brawl. Now, the New York Knicks and their fans speculated that Miami's head coach, Pat Riley, told Brown to intentionally start a fight in hopes that it would lead to some Knicks players getting suspended. Well, mission accomplished, there would be suspensions handed out, but unfortunately for New York, the wrong players would get the punishment. You see, even though PJ Brown and Charlie Ward were the ones who started it, the league decided to nitpick and also suspend Patrick Ewing, John Starks, Allen Houston, and Larry Johnson as well, for, you guessed it, apparently leaving the bench. Okay, technically those are the rules, but with these players not being allowed to play over the course of the last two games of the series, it resulted in the Knicks blowing a 3-1 lead, all because they were shorthanded by suspensions. It's a shame because those Knicks were seen as a real threat to the Bulls that year, but the fans were robbed from a potential bloodbath in the conference finals, as the Heat would move on, only to get destroyed in five games. Game 6 of the 1998 Eastern Conference Finals, the Bulls taking on the Indiana Pacers. Reggie Miller and his team knew that if they don't win this game, then it will be the end of their season. 
this was their chance to force a Game 7 against the almighty Bulls. And ultimately, they did just enough to pull it off. But just like there was a controversial no call at the end of Game 4, there was another blown call that went in favor of the Pacers. With about 8 seconds left, Chicago down by 2, they were in position to win the game in advance to play Utah in the finals. Desperately wanting to end it here for a chance to get some extra rest. They get the ball in Jordan's hands, but it doesn't go down how they envisioned it. Jason. Michael, that's the guy to watch. He stumbles and loses it. McKee has it. The Pacers and the Bulls will take it to the limit. Indiana put this game away at the line, relieved that they survived to play one more game. But it's hard to argue that they even deserved to get the opportunity for a seventh game because watching the replay, Derek McKee appears to trip MJ as he drives in. And this angle shows that his arm possibly contributed to Jordan's fall as well. See that he put his right arm down and gave Michael a push and he lost his balance. Interestingly enough, both finishes we've had, games four and six here, have interested, ended with a controversial no call. That sequence at the end allowed Indiana to stay alive and put Michael and the Bulls in a vulnerable position with the series now tied up, almost ruining his last dance. We all remember the insane ending to Game 6 of the 2013 NBA Finals. Ray Allen came up big to tie the game with about 5 seconds left. The Spurs did not have a timeout, so when the officials decided to quickly stop the game just so they can review if Allen was behind the line, you would think that San Antonio would be happy that they were essentially given a free timeout, but not exactly. You see, Greg Popovich was furious because they would have rather preferred using those final seconds to try and score the ball in transition, as they felt that was the best way to win the game in that particular situation. Normally, they choose to review three-pointers during timeouts, but the refs explained that they just wanted to get the score correct before continuing. But all it did was give Miami a chance to set up their defense, which resulted in Tony Parker airballing the final shot of regulation. And the Heat went on to ultimately win the title. Alright guys, make sure to comment down below if you know of any other crucial bad call that ended up having a massive impact on NBA history. Also hit that like button if you enjoyed, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.